Hi, this is Nasser from Note Solution. We're going to be talking about long-run competitive equilibrium today, and we're going to be looking at a difficult question just to clarify our concepts. So the question is about the pub industry, and it says, assume that the pub industry in Toronto is a constant cost, perfectly competitive industry. The industry is currently in long-run equilibrium. The output of this industry can be expressed in pints of beer sold. So we have both shorter and long run, and it says it's in long run equilibrium, which means that price is equal to marginal cost, which are also equal to the long run average cost. So we're at that point right over there. So this is our long run equilibrium point right there. Um, so it goes on further to say, draw the market demand, short run supply, long run supply, the representative firm's short run average cost curve, and marginal cost curves, and the representative's long-run average cost curve. And it also says show the equilibrium price and quantity, and also show the representative's equilibrium quantity in the long run. So this is how these curves would look. So as we all know that demand slopes downward and short-run supply would slope upward, but the, the only catch over here is that since it's a constant curve, a constant cost industry, the long run supply curve will be a flat line, meaning that no matter how many firms or no matter how much output you do, the costs will be constant in the long run. And so we have the long run cost curve being a flat line or horizontal line and the demand and supply curves being as they were before. And then we come to the long run, we have, as we know that the long run average cost curve is comprised of the minimum points of all the short run average cost curves. So there's many short run average cost curves all around over here and their minimum points are what generate this long run average cost curve. And so that's how you want to show that. And then um, in equilibrium over here, it's going to be price is equal to average cost, which is this one, so long run, which is also equal to marginal cost at this particular point. So that's what we want to, when they say the first part, draw all these curves, this is what you want your diagrams to look like. Just make them neat so that the prof or whoever's checking your paper can understand and just label them nicely. And so that's how you want to be doing that. And then you of course show that the equilibrium quantity. So we're just gonna be dealing with D1 and S1. So this is your point to start with, with Q1 and P1, which is just going to be your price and quantity. Um, the rest of the curves are of course, we're gonna be talking them after and then the long run, it's going to be price one again, and Q1 right there, the long run quantity, where all these curves intersect. So it goes on to say, due to a permanent change in lifestyles, there's a large increase in the demand by individuals to drink in pubs. What will happen to the market equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity of pints in the short run? And then it says, what will happen to a representative pub's equilibrium quantity in the short run? And then it says, explain your answers. So what we, what it's asking us to do is basically explain how an increase in demand would affect the short run market. So if more people demand beer or more people want to drink in pubs, that means that we're going to be going from D1 and shifting outwards towards D2 or an increased demand. But what happens in the short run? So in the short run, we're going to move from this point up to D2 on the short run supply curve. So we're going to move up to this point right over here. So this means that there's going to be a, a higher price than before and a greater quantity. So more quantity demanded and a higher price is, is a signal for suppliers to actually produce more. And so you can see the quantity is increasing from Q1 to Q2. The moving from this point to that point right over there. So that's basically going to be the short run movement. Um, as a result of an increase in demand for drinking. And then it goes on to say, um, and also asking what would happen to the quantity. So we've talked about the quantity and the price. And so um, this, is, this is basically a short run scenario of what would happen if the demand for drinking increased. So the next part says, will the price remain at P2, which is right there, and Q2, quantity of beer sold, in the long run, explain your answer with the help of a diagram. So, as we talked about, since the demand increased, 
we moved along the supply curve or the short-term supply curve and we went up to this point with a higher quantity as well as a higher price. Now, as we know, this point can't remain in the long run and the reason for that is in the short run, as we all know, that this, the equilibrium condition is price is equal to marginal cost. <coughs> so at this point, price was equal to marginal cost, but what happened is that the price went up and the marginal cost remained the same since it was a constant cost industry. So the marginal cost remained the same and the price went up and this was a signal for um, that firms were actually making economic profits just because of this disequilibrium and so this would in fact attract more firms thinking that you know what the pub industry is now profitable so why don't we actually go and join and, act and take a part or take a chunk of these profits so that means that the supply curve will also shift out but as long as it will intersect with the long run supply curve so that's where it stops that's like that's how you know how much the shift will be is it's going to be from the original supply curve to the amount where d2 and the long run supply curve intersect because it can exceed this point as, as, as a result of the long run supply. So what happened is people actually see this economic profit and they want to join and so they actually come into the industry so we see a move from there down to this point. So this will be our new equilibrium point where the long run supply and the new demand intersect. So the price would once again return to P1 since that's the long run price. That's how we are. That's where we are right over there. So that's the long run price. It has to return to that because that's the most efficient um, or the minimum efficient scale of production. And so the price will return to that, but quantity will even increase further to Q3. So our new equilibrium quantity and price will be P1 and Q3 respectively. Now looking at the long run, what happened over here before was that we, we were at P1 initially, but then what happened is the demand spiked up the price and so we went up to P2 which is right over there. And so the new short run equilibrium was just P2 and the short run marginal cost right over there. And so the intersection of those basically determined where we would be producing. So that's Q2, but what happens in the long run is that you would return back to um, a point of minimum efficiency or a point where um, the marginal cost and the long run average cost intersect. And so that would once again be your um, equilibrium point. And, therefore, and that's basically what uh, the question is asking us.